The sheriff drove straight into the bright light and woke up 30 minutes later with burns around his eyes. He didn't know what started as a routine night patrol would actually change his life forever. Welcome to the Paranormal Post, I'm Clayton Morris. On this channel, we cover unexplained mysteries, paranormal research that will expand your consciousness, and stories that make you cover your face with blankets at night. Now, if you enjoy these kinds of stories, then please hit that subscribe button. We publish twice a week, like clockwork. Although tragic, it's nothing out of the ordinary if someone's car gets stolen. There's a fair share of abandoned cars all across the earth whose owners might have died or no longer needed or mysteriously disappeared. But one of the most amazing stories involving a missing car or a car that got smashed happened in Minnesota. The Marshall County Sheriff's Deputy Val Johnson, who until this day has no idea what in the world happened to him that night. Did he see aliens? Did he see spaceships? It's unclear. But what is clear is the evidence left behind, the squad car, which could be proof that Earth was visited that day by some unknown force. 36 years ago, at exactly 1.40 a.m., Marshall County Sheriff's Deputy Val Johnson was on one of his routine night patrols along a rural area of State Highway 220 near the city of Warren, Minnesota, when something happened that would change the rest of his life. At first, he thought it was an airplane in the sky. It was about to make an emergency landing. Deputy Johnson didn't shy away from trouble. He drove straight into this beaming light. What a brave individual. I mean, that's bravery. Whatever it was, he didn't know what he was driving into. A bright light, he later described it as a bizarre phenomenon that was happening right in front of his eyes. He heard the familiar noise, though, of glass breaking. And then, that's the last thing he remembers, because he lost consciousness. Half an hour later, he woke up in a ditch nearby with burns around his eyes and a big lump on his head. But the squad car, however, was in much worse condition. The windshield and one of the headlights of his 1977 Ford LTD was totally smashed and the hood was caved in as if something had fallen out of a 10-story window and landed on his hood. The impact also pushed the car, coasting 854 feet along the road before it stopped at a 90-degree angle to oncoming traffic. Now, he knows how many feet because investigators later measured the distance, almost 900 feet. Just for some perspective, that's almost as long as the Eiffel Tower. It's as long as three Statue of Liberties, one on top of the other. That's pretty darn far, right? He noticed that both the radio antennas on the car were bent straight backward. Look at this. Then Johnson called his dispatcher to report what happened. He got a hold of the dispatcher and said, quote, something attacked my car. It wasn't a vehicle. I don't know what it was, end quote. He tried to make sense of when this, quote, attack happened, and the dispatcher told him what time it was. But he couldn't believe what time it was because the time didn't match his dashboard clock. Then he started to pay attention to some of the smaller details, like his own wristwatch. It wasn't smashed. It looked totally normal, like it always did, and it matched the time on the dashboard clock. There's just one problem. The dispatcher told Johnson that the real time was 14 minutes ahead. So both his watch and the dashboard clock were 14 minutes behind. The other officers arrived on the scene insisting that he be taken to the hospital because the burns around his eyes and the bump to the head, pretty serious stuff. When he got to the hospital in Warren, a doctor treated his eyes and told him that these kinds of burns were similar to what they would see from welder's burns, which are burns caused by direct and prolonged exposure to bright ultraviolet light. Welder's burns. Well, that was enough to kick off a big investigation. First, investigators wanted to find out what American aircraft might have been in the area that night. So the Marshall County Sheriff's Office, led by Sheriff Dennis Brecky, contacted both the Air Force and the Federal Aviation Agency, the FAA. They both confirmed that no aircraft had been scheduled to fly or were anywhere near that area on the early hours of August 27th. So nothing official was in the air that night. Nothing appeared on the radar either that would have caused any kind of an alarm. Basically, no evidence of any man-made or otherworldly craft appeared on radar or scheduled to fly. Sheriff Brecky also contacted the Center for UFO Studies in Evanston, Illinois, which tested the car for electromagnetic evidence, but no definitive results were obtained. 
Well, Deputy Johnson, who had this incident happen to him, sat down for an official report that was recorded on audio tape at police headquarters. He said, quote, I noticed a very bright, brilliant light, eight to 12 inches in diameter, three to four feet off the ground. The edges were very defined. If things weren't interesting enough, nearly three months later in November, a metal engineer from Honeywell visited the sheriff's office to test the car himself. Now remember, Honeywell doesn't just make thermostats. They are a massive defense contractor that makes avionics, aircraft engines, and all manner of materials for the US military. So someone called him. A guy from Honeywell doesn't just show up unless someone asks him to come and figure out what attacked this cop car. Well, Honeywell did admit that their tests concluded that an electrical force, or as he called it, a quote, thing, caused the damage. A thing caused this damage. After that, Brecky's office was flooded with phone calls from other Minnesota citizens that confirmed seeing the very same bright light that day. And many others shared their story of UFO sightings around the Warren area. Deputy Johnson himself made several media appearances, including Good Morning America, to share what happened to him that night. I traveled about a mile and the light seemed to uh, intercept me, so to speak. Came, uh, came right upon me. It was painful. The, the light was extremely brilliant and painful. I closed my eyes and I heard the sound of breaking glass and that's the last I remember. The attention turned Johnson into a local legend and a national media sensation. And years later, people are still talking about it, including Sheriff Brecky. We uh, do believe that our deputy had an encounter with something that we haven't been able to explain yet on this date. And there's uh, a lot of interest because of that. I don't know what happened. I did. I know in my own mind, I did the best job we could with me and my department to investigate and find out what went on. And all we found out is we don't know. The same Ford squad car that Sheriff Brecky is standing next to in that last soundbite is preserved and on display in the Marshall County Museum with a plaque that reads UFO car and hundreds of people travel miles to see it. Former Sheriff Brecky also sometimes gives talks about the car and the night that his deputy drove into the light as well as the investigation that was conducted at the time. But the Val Johnson incident had traveled beyond Marshall County. Many paranormal TV shows like the UFO Files and Mysteries at the Museum made reenactments. In fact, it's among the top 10 most influential UFO encounters in history, according to Jerome Clark, who's the writer of the 1998 book, The UFO Encyclopedia, a great book. Clark said the incident was an extraordinarily important case because a lot of people have strange experiences on the roads late at night, but very few of them yield any tangible evidence and even fewer get investigated at all. And I wouldn't even go further than that to say almost none of them get called in by an actual sheriff's deputy reporting the incident. However, now after 36 years, one central thing is strikingly missing from the yearly talks that happen at the Marshall County Museum and all the TV shows and social media posts about it. It's Val Johnson himself. If you try to find Val, good luck. You won't find him. Many people say he's still haunted by what happened to him that night 36 years ago. A Pioneer Press article that was published in 2013 said that Johnson quickly grew tired of interviews after the incident and is believed to now live somewhere in Wisconsin. But someone finally did manage to track him down, and he does in fact live in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And when asked about the incident, he said it's unexplainable and will remain so. That's all he'll say. To this day, Johnson doesn't know what happened to him in 1979. He's inclined to think that the light was nothing extraterrestrial but he won't rule out the possibility. All he can confirm is that he saw a ball of light and drove toward it. Suddenly, it was in the car with him. But today, this incident is still one of the more significant events in ufology because it wasn't as simple as just seeing something in the sky. This incident left physical damage to the car and to Val Johnson himself. Now, Chad Lewis, a researcher who's written extensively about this incident and spoken about it on numerous occasions at the museum, said, quote, I spoke with the other people in the community in the town, and these were down-to-earth rural people. They weren't quick to make up a ruse for publicity. They believed the stories, and they believed that Val had seen something, end quote. Now, Lewis further proved his extraterrestrial theory by mentioning that experts and even independent investigators examined the car and none of them were able to come out with any kind of an explanation. So let's go over the key points in this case. Loss of time, 14 minutes, gone. 
the faded memory of Val Johnson. The squad car smashed and moved nearly 900 feet and then parked perpendicular to the road. The physical injuries that Johnson endured around his eyes and his head and the mysterious ball of light. No aircraft in the air that night and an engineer from Honeywell finding that a force of energy smashed the car. In 1979, those were not the classic sightings of UFOs that people reported, you know, saucers hovering over the White House, etc. So it would have made no sense for Val Johnson to go with this story to fake an encounter. In fact, after this specific incident, Val basically went into hiding, didn't want to talk about it much anymore. The things that Johnson experienced are now reported, though, in other cases over and over, like missing time. Heck, Bud Hopkins even wrote a great book about missing time. You should all read it. But then it wasn't well known at the time. And as researcher Chad Lewis said today, you could find that easily if you wanted to hoax it or if you wanted to replicate some of the things that other people were reporting. But back then, that wasn't well known, like the missing time piece of this. If he was looking to make this up, he would have been hard pressed. And unless he was very interested in UFO literature and folklore, then he probably wouldn't have known any of this information. On the other side of the story, some skeptics have theories about that incident. They said that Val Johnson was just out hot rodding his car that night on the county road and made the whole thing up to cover up his misconduct of hot rodding his squad car. People who support this theory say that it's backed up by fact that Johnson refused to take a polygraph test. But at the time, the media attention was too much for him and he didn't want to feed into the mass panic surrounding the incident. Another theory suggested that there might have been a more earthly explanation, like the beaming flying object might have been a illegal Canadian plane smuggling illegal substances into the United States. Either way, you would be surprised how often people in rural areas like northwest Minnesota sometimes see something in the night sky and get called liars for it. They get made fun of. They get mocked. Not on this channel. Just read through the comments on any of my videos and you'll see real people just like you who've seen amazing things. They feel like they can't share these things, but I'm glad they can share them with me here on this channel because we will welcome you with open arms. And this is a safe space for you to share your stories. Now, if you like this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. We publish these videos twice a week. And hey, share this video with a friend of yours that might be interested in UFOs and alien encounters. And let me know in the comments, which theory do you think is closest to reality? And check out this other video right here on the channel where we explore another unexplained mystery. We'll see you next time, everyone.